video on atomic structure and electron structure using the Sunflower for Science uh, website software. Uh, if you're a Cheney School student, then you have access to this software and you can find out how to get onto it via the, um, the revision blog. Anyway, uh, this is the, uh, the simplest of all the elements. This is hydrogen. And here on the screen, you can see a kind of diagram of a hydrogen atom. It's very, very simple. It has a nucleus here, which you can see in red. In fact, it's uh, just a single proton. And traveling around it is a single electron. Now, this isn't, this isn't a very accurate diagram at all. Um, because actually protons are much, much bigger than that compared to electrons. And the size of the atom is, is enormous compared to the size of the proton. The proton will be like a, a grain of sand at the center of a, of a classroom or a, a tennis ball on the, the sort of center spot of Wembley Stadium or something like that. Um, all the mass is in the, the, the nucleus because uh, every proton weighs nearly 2,000 times as much as, as, as every electron. Here is the symbol for hydrogen, H, and the 1, 1 means that uh, there's one proton and there's a total of one things in the, in the nucleus, which is the same proton. And this down here is a way of representing the, the electron structure. It's a 1 for the, for the one electron. Um, we usually use this kind of diagram to show the structure of the, uh, the atom. It's called a, a Bohr diagram. And this is the electron, and here 1p means one proton, and 0n means zero neutrons. So if we add in a neutron, we get something which is still hydrogen. Uh, the number 1 here refers to the one proton, and there's one electron, and both those things mean it's still hydrogen. But now it's an isotope of hydrogen. It's a, a natural isotope. It's called deuterium, and it's just naturally around in the in the water and so on but hardly any of the hydrogen is this but it's important because we can use it to make um, hydrogen bombs and, and fusion reactions if we add in another neutron this is still hydrogen again it's another isotope but then if we add uh, another proton we've got a whole new element and this is now called helium and helium has two electrons to balance out the two protons so helium has there are two protons and four total um, things in its nucleus, protons plus neutrons. This is called the atomic number and this is called the mass number or the relative atomic mass. And here the number two means we've got two electrons. Now, um, if I took the two electrons away, then we'd still have helium, but we'd have a, a helium ion. I'll take both of them away. There we go. And in fact, this is just two protons and two neutrons, which is... It's also called an alpha particle when it's thrown out of the, the nucleus of a, of a decaying radioactive isotope. I'll put those back in plus one more, give ourselves another proton and a neutron. Now this is an isotope of lithium, about seven and a half percent of all the lithium in the universe is, is this isotope, but mostly it's got an extra neutron. So it's got an atomic mass of seven because it's three protons and four neutrons. We can have a look in the other the other form of this diagram, there they are. Three red protons and there's a total of four green neutrons in there. And there's three electrons going around the outside. But you can only fit two electrons in the first shell. And then the next electron has to go into a, an outer shell, or sometimes we say a, a higher energy level. And we write the electron structure as two comma one. That means two electrons in the first shell and one in the third. Uh, now, um, lithium very easily loses that extra outer shell electron to become a lithium ion. It's Li plus because the three protons are positive, the two electrons are negative. So there's three positives, only two negatives. So overall, it's got a charge of plus one. Now, and the electron structure now is just two. In fact, it's the same as helium. And that's because helium is a noble gas. Uh, it's very stable. It doesn't react with anything really because it doesn't need to gain or lose electrons to have a full outer shell. Now if we quickly, because we're running out of time, go all the way up to fluorine and we'll find the natural isotope of fluorine and we'll give it the electrons that it should have. This is a fluorine atom. It has nine protons, ten neutrons, giving it a mass of 19, electron structure of two in the inner shell and seven in the outer, almost full. To be full, it needs eight in the outer shell that's now stable and it's a fluoride iron F minus.